Good evening, everyone. Hope you can see me okay. Hi, uh, my name is Sally Lynn McDonald, and today I'll, tonight I'll be showing you a mixed media uh, project, kind of a home decor project, um, reminiscent of Thanksgiving and uh, baking an apple pie. Uh, here in the United States, we're heading towards um, the most delicious time of the year with Thanksgiving and the winter holidays around the corner. So. Um, this project is something that you could give to a holiday hostess or keep for yourself for a decoration for your own home. Lucky for me, we won't be consuming any carbs during our project, but we hopefully will be burning a few calories. <laughs> um, if you want to purchase the products from Helmer that are used in this project, you can use a coupon code that is currently being typed in the online chat area. Uh, this is only for our online uh, live guests. And so I've just typed that in and you should see that shortly or you may have caught it before. Um, so I'm going to go over that and also I'll share it again at the end of the live presentation. Um, here's just a quick list of what we'll be using tonight and I will also be posting this on my blog um, which I'll put up now so you can have that as well which is sallylynnmcdonald.com. Alright, um, tonight we're going to be using a 9 by 12 canvas board um, we're going to use some old book pages or collage papers and um, some Helmar Crystal Coat Matte Spray, Helmar Decoupage and Craft Paste, Helmar 450, uh, Epoxy Clay, uh, various embellishments, some chipboard letters, and different paints and coloring mediums. All right, so hopefully you will uh, enjoy this project and uh, let's begin. First, I have a little bit, I've done some pre-prep on this, um, it's kind of like, just like the cooking shows. I don't want you to have to sit around and wait for things to dry. So I'm going to talk about a few of the things I did and uh, go over that. Um, I have these book pages. Let me switch. I'll try doing it on this camera first. Just some book pages that I ripped out of an old book. And because these are old, um, you have to really be kind of a little careful about them because they're delicate. Um, they may have colors on them or use different printing methods that make them a little bit delicate to use with wet mediums. So um, what I did was I used the Helmar Crystal Coat Matte Spray on the book pages to protect them. And then it dries fairly quickly, but for the purposes of our video, it needs to be sprayed outside or in a well-ventilated area. Um, so we're going to do that later, or I'll show you how it's done. After that, I took my uh, 9 by 12 canvas board and I covered this with the Helmar decoupage uh, craft and paste medium. Sorry, can you see that? Whoop. There it is. <laughs> I covered it with that and I put that all over this and then I applied the book pages to the board. So I'll show you how that's done with a quick little video. As you can see here, um, the 9 by 12 canvas board is just covered with the decoupage and craft paste medium. And then I apply the book pages that have been sealed with the Crystal Coat Matte Spray. And I go from the center out, applying the medium to them to get rid of any bubbles and make sure that we don't have any you know, bubbles left over underneath it. So if you just go from the center out and just delicately, I'm using just a seafoam sponge dauber to kind of apply the medium. So you can see how it's done. It's very easy. This is what I call the uh, cell phone cam. <laughs> how low can you go without getting medium on your cell phone? You can see you have uh, the medium is both on the board itself and then being applied on top of the book pages. This will seal them in. Um, as I said before, we use the crystal coat mat to protect them. Then the decoupage is gonna not only attach them to the surface, but also protect them from any wet medias that we're going to be using later on. And yeah, I always wear smocks when I'm doing this work because my sleeves get all over everything. And there's just kind of an upper view of what it looks like as in progress. Okay, next. 
I use the heat tool. I'm going to go over these steps real quick for you to, to see how it works. Just to reiterate what we did. These are the products we used. Sprayed on the book pages. Our next product. So now we've gotten past all the stuff that takes too much time. So this is the part of the cooking show where they take something out of the oven and it's all ready. Well, not quite. One more thing that I did. I used a product called epoxy clay. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Let's get these turned around properly. It's called epoxy clay. It's spelled funny. This is a two-part clay. That's why I have two containers. And you take the two equal parts and merge them together and just knead them up really well. And that way you're going to be able to have the chemical reaction to make it dry. It's a clay, but it's not an air dry clay and it's not a baking clay. It's a clay that dries through a chemical process. So when you put the two equal parts together, you get a project. And so what I did was I kneaded those parts together and then I put them onto the board and made sort of this pie crust rim. Um, let me bring up the other camera so you can see it a little bit better. So now it has sort of this little pie crust rim that I've created uh, with the clay as well as a little itty bitty apple up in the corner. And this is just with the clay and this has already been on here and cured completely. It's a chemical cure so you don't have to bake it or anything like that. So that is our project so far. I um, want to see if there's any questions at this point. Um, we basically covered how these papers were put on. Um, you'll see a little bit around the edges as it was drying. I did pull up some of the paper around the edges and that's just to kind of give it a bit of a distressed look. Um, so you can see around the edges a little bit. You know, I, I like to kind of pull it up a bit and not have it be that neat. So when I was putting my papers on, I actually have them cut with these funny little shape. And I'll actually put it on the edge and then sort of pull it up in the process of drying so I can get a little bit of a distressed look, if that makes any sense. All right. So thank you for looking at that. Now, what I was thinking when I made this was apple pie. And so I had uh, this little crust here, and I thought, well, what am I, how am I going to fill this with some apples? And I'm certainly not going to put real apple on here. That might be interesting, but I don't think it's very feasible. So um, this is where you're going to get into the, my crazy mind. Um, be afraid. I found, have these in my craft room, and they are these really weird gummy ornament things that were holiday lights something. They were from Prima, and they're kind of funky. I mean, they're pretty, but I have a lot of them, and they have sort of this almost skeleton leaf look to them. And when I looked at it, I thought, geez, that looks like an apple slice to me. So very easy to disassemble this piece, and just I peel it back. This comes right off. It's amazing how easily that comes off, and I could use that for another project, so that's not getting thrown away. But now I've got this little thing, and if I just take my scissor, I'm going to cut this in half, just kind of following the line. And to me, that is some apple slice for the inside of my pie. What do you think? That's what I thought when I saw it. So now I've got a whole bunch of them because through the miracle of television, I've already done some of this work. I'm not going to put the glittery side up, but as you can see, when I start stirring them around here inside the pie, it starts giving that nice dimension that I'm going to want inside my pie. Yes, and calorie free. <laughs> it's also not going to get attacked by bugs when you hang it up on the wall. So now I need to glue this down. And my glue of choice for working with something that's a little more non-porous, and also because I'm going to be using wet paint mediums and stuff in here, I'm going to use uh, Helmar 450. 
Here's our little Price is Right moment. Helmar 450 is going to be used for this. And this is a nice medium uh, glue. It gives us just enough time to work with it, to move something around. But it has a nice quick grab. So I can like have things stuck in here and it'll grab it pretty quickly. And so that I can layer these around and I'm just going to go on this glittery side. And this is not going to have any trouble adhering to all this gunk that's on the other side of this. But it's going to give me just what I want. I'm going to leave this area down here, kind of right in this colored area, a little bit more open because that's where I'm going to put my title for the piece. And now this is where you have to hurry up and wait as I stick all this stuff in here. I apologize. There is some stuff I have to do live. After all, if I'd stuck these in before, you would say, what are you sticking in there, Sally Lynn? And if you just joined us, these are ornament pieces from Prima that just became apple slices. Wow. It's amazing what we can do. We're such creative people. I never like to have something sitting in the cabinet for too long. And even though the holidays are coming up, I just feel like using these in a different way. And I don't know if you are into that too, maybe it'll make you think differently about something that you've got on hand. Best thing is to have the right glue though to stick it down because if you don't use the right adhesive, you're never going to have a successful project. And that's what I like about Helmar and all the variety of things they're using to put this together. Once again, if you're interested in any of the adhesives that I've been using tonight, you can use the coupon code that I'm currently typing. And you can use that to purchase any of the products while you're waiting for me to glue all this stuff down. Get some apple slices in here. I do want to apologize in advance in case my dog decides to bark at something. The rest of the short people are out for the night. So I can enjoy this time with you. Warning, do not eat this at home. Getting kind of slicey in here. I think this is going to be good. And if we need some more when we get down to the title, we'll put some more in there. But I think it's going to give us the idea that I'm looking for. And like I said, I want to keep this area open for my title piece. So what do you think? It looks kind of chunky. They sort of look apple-y. They have that translucence of an apple slice to me, especially after they've been baked. All right. Now it's time to do some coloring. Now, next up... I want to add some color to uh, this clay, and this is a paintable clay. So let me just switch to the other camera real quick, and I'll talk to you about what I'm going to be using. Now that we've kind of glued things together here, um, we've pretty much got a lot of our gluing done, and now I want to color the crust. And I am going to be using a, a new product. It's a relatively new product called Art Anthology Gelate, and this is a beautiful sand dune color. And I just thought it was a really nice color for the crust and would just give it a nice fun dimension and, and pretty. So this is something that I thought I would try and use tonight to see what you think about it. And so let me grab a brush and let's get started. 
and I'll switch to the other camera. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this sand colored sand dune art anthology on my brush. You can see the color. Isn't that pretty? It's cool. And we'll just use this to kind of brush on to my pie crust. I like it because it's translucent. It's a little bit sparkly and shimmery. I'll bring this up closer so you can see it. Um, you can add multiple coats to it. It dries very quickly. And it's just going to give me a nice color to this rather than just the clay color that was here. Also, I like it because it's thick, so I have control over the medium and where I'm placing it. And this medium is, you know, it's got like a gel medium base, so it's going to resist any other kind of watered down mediums that I'm going to throw on here later, especially if I, even if I bring in some acrylic paint that's watered down, it'll be resisted by this gel medium. So that's why I start with it first. Like I said, it's going to dry rather quickly, so this is a really nice thing to start with first. Because it's got a little bit of shine to it, it also catches the light where I went around and pinched my fake pie crust. So you can kind of see that a little bit better. Let me bring it up to the camera. So it's kind of catching those inclusions. You go around the edge and get it here too. And as I said before, this is a new product. Um, I know it's they've got a retailer section on their website. That's art-anthology.com. So I don't want you to be frustrated that you can't find something. You can certainly look for it there. And I know they're going to be at the CHA Winter Show in Anaheim. So tell your stores. Now, one of the reasons I like the Helmar 450 is if I get in here with some of the wet mediums, the glue can handle the wet. And so it's not going to freak out when I get wet stuff on it. All right. Um, I know that sometimes people have questions about the clay. The clay is an epoxy clay, and during the first 30 minutes of working with it, it has an adhesive property. So um, let me explain a little bit about that while we're waiting for this medium to dry. The clay has an adhesive property and so it's actually going to stick to my board. I don't even have to use any adhesive on the clay. And same thing with even these this little feature right here where I made my little apple. I was able to stick these pieces of ribbon underneath it and just they're, they're going to stay. Even my little actual leaf twig here I just stuck into the clay. And like I said during the first 30 minutes of working it, it is adhesive. So it's a nice property of it, so you don't have to worry about how to attach it, you don't have to bake it, etc., etc. Works very nicely for quick projects. Okay, so that's it with the gelate for the moment. Next, I want to kind of work on colors around the edges. And so I was going to work on, I brought out a couple different colors of another product. Let me clean up my area here. Another product by Art Anthology, which is known as the Coloration Sprays. And so I've got this one here, which is Timeless, which is kind of this buttercupy yellow. I also picked Heart, just got kind of a pretty pinkish reddish. Um, can't go anywhere without Fern Leaf, because I like that color very much. And just to warm the whole thing up, um, one that's actually called Warm. So I'm going to use these on the project. And these are matte sprays, so they're not going to like overwhelm the project too much. And I can still, like I said, it's going to, the gelate is going to resist it, so I don't have to worry about it overcoloring it. And I can kind of put it in different areas on the project. I'll use this directly to paint my little apple in a bit. And let's get some over here while we're at it. I'm finishing off with one of my favorites, which is the fern leaf.
Okay. And I am going to attack that real quick. Cloth. Clean up my little board here. And just for the sake of time, I am going to grab the heat tool to get that kind of dry on. And just the heat tool, the point is to, you know, speed up the drying time. Um, I just keep moving around. You don't use something like, obviously, a real paint stripper, because that'll, that'll just pull and bubble the paper right up, especially if you've just done the decoupage. But this will help to speed things up a little bit and sort of grab these nice big splotches of color. I, I never wipe that stuff off. I like to have those big, big areas full of wet and let them dry as naturally as I can. But I'm going to speed things up a little bit here just to get some pretty colors around. Hmm, my ribbon doesn't like it very much, my heat tool, so i got to stay clear of that. Watch your aim. Okay, just to give that a little bit of help with the drying. Okay, so you can kind of see everything as it's drying, and look at this great edge that we're getting along the edges and on the surfaces. Isn't that pretty? Ooh, ooh I'm going to have some fun with this. All right, in the pie area itself, I am going to start actually with some of this um, timeless which is the yellow and just to get into this part with the actual pie apples and then bring in a little bit of paint I think I'll play first with warm I really like warm it just does exactly what it says it's going to do it's going to give me just the right color gosh that's perfect Aren't I lucky? Now, this is a definitely a non-porous surface. These little uh, ornament guys, remember these? So they're non-porous, so they're a real pain to get paint and stuff to stick to. But there's no worry about it here. This product will dry on here. And so it, that's really nice. So we don't have to wait a long time. We're not going to do anything else in this area. We're just going to let that dry. And we're going to go ahead and work over here on some more embellishment. This is almost there. Once again, one of my favorite adhesives is the Helmar 450 because this is a solvent-based glue and I can use it while things are still wet. I don't have to wait for everything to dry off and be ready for me. I can just attack. So now I have this cute little uh, vintage-looking print from Crafty Secrets and I'm going to go ahead and figure out how to place it on my project. You know, my very scientific method of just putting it where I want it and kind of bending it around the pie crust. So it'll create an indentation so now I know where I have to cut it. Scientific. At least give me some idea of where it has to be trimmed. We can always jimmy that up later. This project is literally, I just got some of the products in hand so I did not have a finished project here. This is the one. I'm doing it live, literally. So bear with me and we'll have it on the website which I will post again both on my blog and on Helmar USA's blog when it's all finished. I basically concentrated on the things that I needed to get done so I wouldn't make you have to wait too much. Okay. See how great that adhesive is? It just works on there even though the surface is still a little bit wet. You don't have to worry about anything. It's fabulous. You can just keep going and keep going. Okay. Well, waiting for a little bit more for this to dry because I have some chipboard letters to put on. And if you're familiar with chipboard letters, they're self-adhesive, which is a joke, is it not? Self-adhesive chipboard is a lie. It's never quite as adhesive as you need it to be. So once again, Helmar 450 to the rescue. Um, I'm going to take this little piece of burlap and kind of put it here for a transition piece. And then put my title on. That'll 
will serve as a transition from the pie. Excuse me if I have to spell upright here, so I'm turning it around. And since I know that the people who watch this taped and not live don't get or aren't privy to the chat, I will say my website is my name. So it's SallyLynnMacDonald.com. And that's MacDonald, M-A-C. Or as I say it, the ones who wear plaid. You never know what you're going to get. So, self-adhesive chipboard can always use a little backup from the Helmar 450. As I said before, you can work with these solvent-based glues on top of surfaces that are still a little bit wet, and they are going to work with it. So, no lines, no waiting. Oh, because I'm doing this word, I'm going to start from the back, because I'd like to space it to the edge. See, the glue works with me when I don't even get things placed quite perfect. I have just enough open time to scooch it into place. All right, here we go. Now we have our little title on here. Turn that around so you can see it better. And you can see everything sticks on here. It goes on real quick and it dries really well even though the surface you can still see it's quite wet underneath but it's working fine. doesn't matter one bit. That's the beauty of a solvent adhesive. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint my apple and I'm just going to use this spray right onto this craft sheet here. And a little water brush, even though there's no water in here, just to kind of get a coat onto the clay. Bring it up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just putting a coating of the red on here. I'm gonna have to do several coats to get it to be as stick out as much as I'd like to. I might even cheat and get some of the gelates and work with that as well just to get it thicker, but this is a good start. Okay, just to make our apples stick out. Then I can use this color as well as some other ones just on a scrunched up paper towel or any other brush. I have a little stipple brush here and I'm just going to grab some of that and kind of pounce on these letters with this color. Okay, and we're moving right along. It's just about done. I would say the only things that I would want to do left would probably be doing a little bit of stamping on the letters, just to add some more detail to it. And I want to add some of the gelate to the burlap for a fun look. I'm going to dry brush that on. So this brush is totally dry, no water in it, and I'm just going to get a little bit of this on the edge and dry brush it onto the burlap to give it a little bit of texture and fun and sparkle. There's just so much to love about burlap. I want you to take a look and see what that looks like now. It's got just a little bit of sparkle to it. No, it's hard to catch on the camera. And we can use the same gelate just around on the pie crust one more time to 
give it another coat. I'm going to attack the chipboard letters real quick. Could these dried up a bit more? So I can add a couple more colors to it. There we go. Those are nice and dry. Put my brush. Just add a little more to these chipboard letters because they look too neat to me. They need to grunge up a bit. Looks like all the other areas are pretty much dry. And yes, a little stipple brush is your friend, as well as a water brush. There's all kinds of great brushes out there that you can use to do a project like this. Okay, so last I'd like to do a little bit with the warm, just around the edges. And this is just, you know, the tried and true, everybody knows this technique of just putting it on the edge and kind of running the project through it, literally. I like to get the edges with the, some, product, some product on them. I'm just going to use the stipple brush just to warm that up and get some product around the edges. Like I said, this color is called warm and it really works nicely for doing just that and unifying. Giving it a nice vintage look. Okay, so that is basically our project. Now I'm just waiting for it to dry. <laughs> it's kind of like waiting for the pie to finish baking. But we've got some different surfaces on here. You can see how well the Helmar works for the book pages, for the other elements, um, for adhering down these really fussy little uh, other things. All of this stuff it works really well if you've missed any of our presentation tonight this episode is being recorded and will be on the Ustream channel as well as some some close-up pictures and everything of the final product will be on my blog which is sallylynnmcdonald.com and I'll type that in a moment as well as um, I believe it's going to be on the Helmer Helmar blog in a few days so let me go ahead and put some of that information on here This is my website, and at the very top, you should have seen the Hel the one for Helmar, who I don't like at all caps. Helmar USA on TypePad is the Helmar version of it, and anyone can give me the uh, one for the Australian website as well. If Katie, if you knew that one, if you could type it, please. And um, for the guests who are online live with us tonight, this is the educator code you can use for getting a discount on your Helmar products on their website. So thank you very much for joining me tonight. Um, and thank you for working with me on this project. It's been a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a nice little hostess gift for somebody. 
a little bit of apple pie uh, out of my kitchen tonight. <laughs> so um, I'm going to stop the recording and we can uh, talk about um, some different aspects of the project if you have any questions, okay?